let's begin with the basics. We've had a lot of questions as, on just like what ayahuasca is and its purposes in both like physiological and psychological angles. So maybe, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about this? <laughs> wow, that's such a huge question. Yeah, do you want to start uh, with uh, your approach? For sure. Uh, ayahuasca is an indigenous plant medicine. And uh, what that basically means is that in certain regions, the Amazon rainforest yep. uh, of South America, there are various indigenous tribes that have discovered this particular combination of two plants. Uh, and so ayahuasca is that combination of two plants, which is a vine of one plant and a leaf of another plant. And when you cook it up together, uh, it creates this special brew. And you're going to talk about the MAOI inhibitors and the DMT. Yes. So uh, <laughs> the reason why this is such a popular um, substance in Latin America before it was you know, found um, by the West is because for thousands of years, indigenous healers called curanderos or shamans used this um, plant-based remedy to heal their tribes and to help people struggling with different things and also to connect with a their spiritual selves. So it's a very powerful um, plant-based remedy that helps people with lots of different things. And so um, the reason it works so well, and there's lots of reasons, but one main reason is because there's two components in the in this concoction that that allow the absorption of the active ingredient into the body. And one of them is what we call a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. And that is a substance that blocks the stomach enzymes from destroying the active ingredient. So it kind of like quiets the, the stomach enzymes for a bit. And then the DMT, which is dimethyltryptamine, is based in the leaf plant, is absorbed into the body and then creates these effects that help people that have mental health issues or just have life purpose issues or they've experienced trauma, or that just need some clarity and to, to connect with themselves. We all know in a Western mindset, there's a lot of dissociation and being unplugged and going through life sort of numb. And ayahuasca helps to reconnect people with themselves. And it's a, it's a, a beautiful experience for people that can be hard and is work, but is something that's really safe if you meet the medical qualifications of which I'm sure we're gonna explain in this webinar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you. Thank you for the explanation about this. Um, so we could go a little bit deeper maybe on that since we're going to be talking about PTSD and uh, how it helps. So um, can you, uh, Dr. Jeff, can you uh, touch base a little bit on uh, what happens in the brain, you know, when we take ayahuasca and, and talk about the default mode network and uh, the emotional processing and, and neuroplasticity? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, trauma is an interesting um, concept, you know, that happens to, to all of us in one way or the other. Having what we call PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is a certain condition that people that have been through trauma in the past are currently experiencing negative symptoms of anxiety, um, sadness, uh, overwhelmingness, insomnia. So in other words, the trauma of the past is affecting their current life. And that's what gives someone the, this diagnosis, this PTSD diagnosis. But all of us go through trauma. And when we go through trauma, um, in order to survive trauma, whether it's abuse, neglect, abandonment, or a really scary moment, um, a car accident, for example, um, when we go through these things, our emotions that are present during the traumatic moment or traumatic era those emotions get in the way of our survival. If I'm afraid or if I'm um, angry or if I am uh, have empathy for the person that's around me and I'm trying to survive, those emotions are going to block my survival because I need to fight or I need to run from a traumatic moment. Like a veteran or a military person, um, when they're in war, their emotions are not present because if they were, they would get killed. And so the emotions instinctively get pushed out of the way and they go into an area of the brain called the amygdala. And that's where we store our subconscious memories, emotions, and all kinds of stuff so we can survive those moments. So what happens when you drink ayahuasca is the medicine, the ayahuasca goes into your body and it, and it connects with something called um, the Sigmar one receptors, which are in 
the cell membrane of the neurons in the brain. And what this does is it unlocks your memories because the SIGMAR1 receptor is, is responsible for a pre or a, um, a non-amnesia or an anti-amnesia mechanism because you've forgotten a lot of your traumatic emotions. You've forgotten and blocked a lot of traumatic memories. And that's for survival because a lot of people say, well, I don't remember my childhood. My childhood was, I don't even remember anything, you know, be past age 10. It's like, oh, okay, well, what was, what do you think your childhood was like? Well, I have no idea, but now I'm in relationships that I don't like. I'm in abusive situations. I have a drug and alcohol problem. My life is a disaster and I can't remember anything from age 10 below. Okay. So when you drink ayahuasca, that's going to go into that part of the brain. It's going to unlock those memories and you're going to have that stuff surface in an ayahuasca session so that you can process it. So what's going on um, after you kind of have this emotion surface is those connections and, and Sigmar one has a lot to do with synaptic plasticity, meaning that the brain can adjust and morph a little bit to create new neuron pathways of self-acceptance, understanding of other people, and the brain is very open to this in the, in the part called the prefrontal cortex during an ayahuasca session. So what happens then is I don't want to um, always fear men, for example, because when I was a kid, I got abused by, let's say, my dad, which didn't happen to me, thank God, but as an example. And so now in my life, I'm just afraid of men and I don't want to be around them and I don't like them and I feel scared around them. And so I'd like to get past that because all men are not scary monsters, right? Uh, some are, right? But all men are not. And so how do I get past that? I drink ayahuasca. It goes into my neurons. It opens up and unlocks my memories from the amygdala. They surface. And I see, oh, well, just my dad was difficult. Just my dad was this way. Not all men. And then I start to see that there's men that I've been able to trust over the years. I had a professor that was a mentor. I, my uncle was amazing. My brothers, my friends, other men. And then I build a new neuron pathway with the synaptic plasticity component of the brain. And then I'm no longer afraid of men and I can trust. And so that's kind of the process that goes on with the neurochemistry and sort of the way the brain works with, with trauma and ayahuasca. Hmm. Yeah. I think there's something interesting to say also about uh, when you're experiencing uh, the memory come back the memories come back mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people will come here and they'll say hey i'm my main intention is to learn more about something that i i know for sure happened uh but i i don't really remember details of it or i think maybe something happened uh in my childhood at one point or you know kind of like you were saying and they and a lot of times they'll want more details on that memory and i i think it's important to to set the record straight, you're not always going to get what you're asking for in terms of, I want this memory healed, or I want this memory back, or I want these details. And when, uh, when the medicine is working and the memories are being activated, uh, the experience is sometimes really clear. Uh, like you were saying, Dr. Jeff, where sometimes it feels really clear where you're like, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Everything with my dad. Yeah. It's so clear. And you start to have these moments of clarity or, or visions or, or, or other ways of having the inspiration come through. But sometimes the visions are not just really clear memories. So there is sometimes something that uh, people will say, oh, is this a false memory? And, and what we really talk about with those is those are visions. And so there's there's a, a whole way of interpreting the visions that you experience on ayahuasca, because the the state that you sometimes enter when you're when you're on ayahuasca is sort of like a dream, sort of like a lucid dream state. So just like a dream, you'll sometimes have partial memories. And sometimes mm -hmm. in a dream, you'll be you'll be like, OK, so there I was at Target, but it was really Walmart. But in my dream, it was Target. <laughs> you know what I mean? So those kinds of things actually happen similarly in ayahuasca, too. So so if you if you have uh, traumatic memories or something like that and you a want want specific details, that's the wrong approach. Mm -hmm. um, and also B, if you're afraid of a particular memory coming up, you don't necessarily need to be afraid of that because you don't always really remember or experience the memory again. Yeah, you don't have to relive trauma. That's a big part of this. You don't have right. to relive it. And there's some new data, some new research out in trauma therapy 
where um, you don't even have to actually remember a lot of the trauma to process the trauma because it's about the emotion that's being stored that's holding you back. It's not about the event. The event happened. The event's over. Nothing we could do about it. But those emotions are still active and they're still ruling your life in ways that you don't want to trust other people or you don't want to take risks that are normal and healthy in life. So it's more about the releasing of this pent up emotion. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's somatic. It's in the body, too. It's like sometimes, you know, you think about like getting in a car accident when you're in a car accident or you get in a fender bender, you kind of have whiplash. Um, all different kinds of traumatic events sort of like hit us. and We sort of have like a, almost like a whiplash from different kinds of traumatic events. And so it's in the body. So something you'll see a lot of uh, when you're on the medicine on ayahuasca is you'll drink the medicine and you'll start to feel relaxed in your body. You'll sometimes want to want to move around and stretch. And, and someone would might even come up the next day and say, oh, yeah, nothing happened in ceremony. I just I just drank the medicine and stretched around all night. I, I was here to heal PTSD. Well, that's one of the magic things about ayahuasca is it's not always something that you are mentally processing. It's going into the body. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, and it's very interesting of, of what you were saying about because um, at the end, as we usually say here, it's like, as we feel, we heal, right? And sometimes it sounds cheesy, but it's super true, right? Because <laughs> these emotions at the end that we're storing just become stagnant energy. And if we don't let them out, it's like, it, it comes out a different way. And sometimes it's not as good. So sure. yes. sometimes the cheesiest stuff is like the most legit, <laughs> dead on <laughs> perfect stuff. Like you go to therapy, and mm -hmm. the most basic stuff that sounds corny as heck, that you don't want to touch is like the key to your breakthrough. So often, right? <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. inner child work. Yeah. Like people look, people cringe when I start talking about inner child work, yeah. you know, <laughs> but it's like so good, you yeah. know, it's powerful when it's done the right way. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Intention. Yeah. Yeah. And well, like you're saying, like it, feeling something in order to heal it. That's another thing is a lot of times people are afraid to feel that mm -hmm. um, and they think that they're going to keep feeling it or that the feeling coming up at ayahuasca means that they're going to continue to have that negative feeling. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, cause, cause we talked about how you need to feel something to heal it, but there's actually a, a release. There's something really cool with ayahuasca. Um, and it's the purge people, you know, the purge gets a bad rap, yes. right? Yes. It does get well, a bad people rap. People get afraid of it. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's totally scary. Yeah. The people don't want to <laughs> throw up or go to the bathroom and, you know, they just feel they, they're going to be embarrassed or something, you know? They right. Do it. Yeah. Or it's yeah. like totally uncomfortable because it's yeah. like speaking. Nobody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's so cool that there's this natural medicine ayahuasca that will actually create a situation where you can have a full release mm -hmm. like there's something incredible that happens when you actually have a solid purge yes on ayahuasca you really feel it we're talking th these details like you're really hitting up those scientific details thanks nice job yeah <laughs> loving it uh but when you're in the experience of it there's this there's this amazing catharsis when you have that that somatic release of all those pent up emotions, mm -hmm. you know, because because um, Dr. Mariana, what's what's going on really too, which is something we don't want to forget, is that mm -hmm. in our life we've developed these rumination patterns of sort of ha habitual thinking, and a lot of them are okay ways of you know going to work and doing a good job and you know making paying the bills, but then there's other ones that are not so great, like. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve to be happy. Something's wrong with me. And that's kind of like this rumination. And mm -hmm. we all have these patterns that are, it's like this chaotic blend of all these wires in the brain that are all, you know, locked in psychedelics. And in, in particular ayahuasca, what it does is it, it leads to what we call entropy or disorder in that default mode network of the brain. And it opens up all those chaotic neuron connections and it resettles them in a better, nicer way that's mm -hmm. more healthy for you based on intention and based on the program that that you know that we teach at Rhythmia, but then also, you know, is is the goal of this plant medicine. So it's kind of like you got this chaotic ball in the brain of all this madness, and then it opens it up and resets it. And that's why there's a purge. That's why you're getting rid of all this excess baggage, like emotional baggage. And then you feel amazing afterwards because you've you've recalibrated your brain, you've pressed like a reset button. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
definitely. And um, this def what we we have been talking about definitely goes back into how it can work with people that have PTSD, right? With post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, so can Dr. Jeff, can you tell us a little bit of what the research is saying about the relationship between PTSD and ayahuasca? If there is a therapeutic um, way of helping this type of, of uh, people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know the thing about PTSD in the traditional therapeutic model is that um, it requires years and years of therapy because someone with PTSD doesn't trust anyone and doesn't mm. trust a stranger. That's for sure. And doesn't feel safe to be open and vulnerable in a therapy session. So people with PTSD are very guarded and they're very um, closed off for good reason, because when they were open and were you know receptive, they were um, hurt and disappointed in a dramatic way. And so that's why there's for protection, they've put up a wall. And so the traditional method is to be in therapy for a very long time, possibly on a, a list of medication. And sometimes depending on the severity of the person in intensive outpatient programs or inpatient psychiatric units, that happens too. If someone gets suicidal, you know, they go do that. And so there's like kind of this revolving door of just like stagnation that happens. And so the beauty of um, ayahuasca for PTSD and in the military, they call it PTS because they don't consider it a disorder. It's just a condition. And I agree with that. But for the DSM category, um, we have, we have the D just we're talking about like that. So um, th the goal of the ayahuasca is to help people quickly get past that resistance that in that wall that they've put up. And so what's, what's being shown in the research is that people report now, how do you, how do you measure if someone's overcome trauma? Well, you have to look at what is their life like before the treatment and, and their depression scale score is very high. So they're very depressed. Their anxiety score is very high also on the measurement scales and all the different sort of assessment tools that you're giving to people before um, therapy or before ayahuasca shows that they're very upset and not comfortable in their life and very um, de depressed and anxious. Post-treatment of ayahuasca, it is a hugely significant number of people that report that their, their anxiety has diminished, uh, a lot of them completely diminished, then a middle group very much diminished, and then some people, a, a smaller percentage, just a little bit in improvement. But the bulk of the people report having a huge breakthrough and their stress is much minimal, more minimal or gone. And they, this is after six month follow up and a year follow up. So that's significant. So it's not just within the first 48 hours, which they do report is amazing, but it's also these markers and time valuations later. So the research is showing that this is a very, very good tool for people that have PTSD. It's so good, in fact, that um, the U.S. military, certain veterans administration departments are starting to look at this as a viable option for veterans, which is great news because we all know veterans struggle with a lot of things when they come home from battle and the suicide rate is extremely high. It's completely unacceptable how high that is. And the system that exists for veterans is not working. And we all know this. And so um, not everybody's a veteran. And so you're a veteran of your own life. You're a veteran mm -hmm. of the things you've been going through with your trauma or your marriage or your childhood or your current job or whatever it is that's causing this trauma. You're a veteran of this and it's time to get that sorted out. And this is a really good tool that we've seen that works amazing for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as you were saying at the end, it's like everyone has their own trauma, right? So it's like you have to face it and not necessarily relieve it. But just, you know, loosen the power of it. Because sometimes when we just look at it, like it becomes powerless. Sometimes it's just like taking a lot of power of us just because we're hiding it. Right. So some people, you know, a recent guest told us, you know, that he had lost um, a, his son, you know, and it was just this horrible. I mean, what a painful thing as a parent to lose a kid. I mean, just how do you get past that? You know? Right. And and the work that I did with him very briefly while he was here, because the bulk of this program is the plant medicine itself, mm -hmm. um, was, you know, I told him, you know, you're always going to have that memory. Mm -hmm. 
but you're not going to have that emotional power that it has over you to mm -hmm. hold you back in life to feel connected. And so that's the part that you can work on with this medicine, this ayahuasca is getting past that emotional hold that it, that trauma has on you. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's so interesting how it has been going on like in the jungle for so many years. And it's really cool how now it's getting a spotlight and really coming, you know, to um, maybe being something therapeutic for people, because I think that it can really help, right? We've seen so many guests that come here and, and are able to heal so many of these traumas and PTSD. So yes, um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of registrants that uh, were asking about the screening criteria that we have here and what are some like essential safety considerations when taking ayahuasca? I'm assuming you'd like me to talk about that. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I wrote them. So I think I should talk about them. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's kind of like uh, Mariana said that that she brings the scientific thing into the her relationship to the holistic management. Yeah. It's like you guys break, make all of this scientific. I'm like making it spiritual. I'm the other end of it. Yeah. You know, I'm the other one. You're the also balance. Good, like a, yeah. <laughs> Yin yang. We right? beat in the middle. Yeah. Yin yang. Yeah. So. Okay, so <laughs> So to make to make sure that people are safe with ayahuasca, um, there are medical contraindications and there's certain heart conditions. Like if you've had if you have an arrhythmia, if you have stints in the heart, if you've had open heart surgery, if you've had stroke, if you've had um, certain kind of uh, certain heart conditions, that's a no go because there's receptors on the heart wall that monoamine oxidase inhibitors interact with and it can be dangerous. So heart conditions, a lot of them are, are, are contraindicated. The other thing is um, certain medications. So most psychotropic medications that are for mental health issues, most of them are contraindicated. Um, sometimes there's 30 days off of those things before ayahuasca, sometimes 15 days, depends. And you have to work with your personal physician, prescribing physician to come off of those meds and the, the intake staff that you talk to on the phone with us uh, explain what those parameters are, but there's certain medications, um, for example, antidepressants, you have to be 30 days minimum off of those before drinking ayahuasca. And the reason for that is because monoamine oxidase inhibitor of ayahuasca contraindicate with the SSRI selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor components. Those two things don't go well together. They can cause something called a serotonin syndrome. And also, um, there's certain mental health issues that are contraindicated schizophrenia is is not is not allowed um, with ayahuasca at least arrhythmia and bipolar one which is um the manic sort of strong part of the bipolar diagnoses bipolar two is generally okay uh, bipolar one is when people are a manic and they're usually on meds so they've come down off of that and then and then they would have to get off those meds to drink ayahuasca but it's not it's not recommended to come off those meds because when they come off meds for bipolar one they escalate into a manic psychosis. So it's not, it's not safe. So those mm -hmm. people um, are not, there's, there's other, there's other uh, psychedelic medicines that can be very helpful for people that have heart conditions and bipolar one and other psychotropic medication conditions. Um, ketamine is one of those things that's really good for people that are on mm -hmm. meds that can still stay on most of those meds. Again, you always talk to your prescribing physician about that, right? But there's, it's not like, oh, all hope is lost. I can't drink ayahuasca. There's other things that are okay. Um, you mm -hmm. just have to consult with your doctor. So those are some of the main contraindications, um, the mental health stuff, the meds, and then the, the physical sort of heart condition things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the important thing also is that we do like a pre-screening before they come here and then a screening when they get here. So they should be yes. good to go. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Ben, I have one for you. Um, what, would you what would you say to a person that wants to come for the first time on how they can prepare before drinking ayahuasca? Well, you know, we've been talking about uh, PTS and, uh, you know, like we said, a, a lot of us have trauma. Not everyone has post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. slash disorder. Not everyone has something diagnosed. Um, and even if it feels like you don't necessarily have trauma, we all have conditioning. And so our, our classes uh, are a lot about the, the main intentions as we describe them. It's sort of something that I see those intentions as 
uh, describing the what the medicine is doing naturally and you and how you can better partner with them. So there's a there's a process that everyone goes through, whether you're here for PTSD or here just for for general health or, or whatever you're called to ayahuasca for. There's a general process that the medicine is doing for absolutely everyone. And uh, it's actually related to the reason that ayahuasca is so good for PTS and for trauma. Um, and it's it's the unconditioning. So the first intention, one of the things that I think is so important about Rhythmia is how we have these three intentions. And so I'm just going to outline them real quick. The first intention is uh, you ask the medicine to show you who you have become. And that mm -hmm. means bubble up to the surface all of the distortions in my personality, all of the things that, that I do that are not authentic to my true soul. And then once we see all of that, we have to agree, oh crap, you know, I do all of these different things. I, I, I have all of these uh, control patterns, all of these ways that I manipulate people and, and I'm, I'm not a victim in these areas. I'm, I'm causing the, the problem or whatever. You know, you have that reckoning. Once you acknowledge that reckoning, we sort of do a little bit of, uh, diving in and try to see where where that started. And if we can see where that started, it's usually a childhood moment. Mm -hmm. And then we have the second intention, which is merge me back with my soul at all costs. So that's where a lot of the inner child work will, will come in sometimes, not for everybody, but uh, but that's where we reconnect to that part of ourselves that's unconditioned. Uh, before mm -hmm. we were conditioned by any kind of trauma or any kind of like outside event. We call that moment the split where we where we split from our soul and we start to perform for the world uh, in all the different ways that, that we need to. Mm -hmm. Then that third intention is heal my heart, which is sort of the thing that brings it all into, into completion. You go off home, like feeling all happy and clear about your whole life and everything, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so I, I think that one of the things that's surprising, a lot of people don't realize this, but one recommendation I have, if you're coming for your very first time is to, if you're called to it and it, and it feels like it's the right time, then come, you don't need to come with a list of intentions. You don't need to come with a bunch of stuff to figure out. Something that Jerry says that I like is um, plant medicine done wrong will answer all of your questions, but plant <laughs> medicine done right will eliminate the questions. So mm -hmm. if you're called to it, uh, if you do have a condition, then great. Yeah, we we just talked about you know PTSD, how we can you know target it and work with that specifically. But even if you're just you know called to the medicine, or maybe you're you have a loved one who has PTSD and you happen to also be called to it, whatever. Um, there's a program that's really for everybody, no matter what you're called to the medicine for, and so you don't need to worry too much about listing out all of the different. Um, you know, making Santa's, you know, your little wish list for Santa before you come to do ayahuasca. And that what that quote that Jerry says is really good. And Jerry is our CEO, um, right. owner of Rhythmia. He's the guy that I worked with in Los Angeles for five years that had a breakthrough with plant medicine himself. And and that's why we decided to to open up Rhythmia because he was one of the most difficult people I've ever come across in my life as a <laughs> trauma therapist and addiction specialist. <laughs> he was brutal. And now yeah. he's so sweet. Yeah. Now he's like this amazing dude. <laughs> he was always an amazing dude, but um, now he is uh, just selfless is the best way to describe him. He's selfless. And he just wants to have an environment for people to come that they can do this process safely. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He went through the process himself and he's trying to bring that to people. So yeah. It's really nice <laughs> that he has created this space for people to come and, and overcome their trauma and and or even just connect to themselves. And as you were saying, Ben, at the end, it's like if you're called to come, like there's there's like a calling, right? Once sometimes it starts just by knowing what ayahuasca is, and then maybe it's just that you want to know more, or maybe something like got your attention, and next thing that you know, you're here. <laughs> so um that's usually how it goes um and so another question that a lot of people had it's also when they're leaving you know this integration process that's coming that's really important and then it's now talked about so much after like a peak experience even so uh can can you tell us a little bit on, on how um it can you know how it can be 
easier to navigate this integration process and also how this experience that you have here can integrate into your life. I think we both have good insights on this one. And I can start, I guess, with, uh, you know, first of all, anytime you do an inpatient program, which is what this is, this is a week long program. And I say inpatient because I'm a clinical minded person, right? So what I mean by that is like you're here for a program, you're here, you're, you sleep here, you eat here, everything's here. Integration is so important anytime you've been through a program. And, and what that means is you start to use the tools you've learned and acquired in the program and you've shifted while you're here. You've had all these breakthroughs, realizations, you feel amazing. And then now you have to employ those tactics in your life and you have to build confidence that you can handle situations differently because maybe in the past, anytime there was something that you didn't like doing, you would just retreat from it and, and maybe drink. And so now you don't want to do that. You know, you, you've gotten rid of that baggage. And so now you, you're confronted with a stressful situation in the future when you get home and you have to build confidence. Okay. I'm not drinking. I'm actually going to engage and I'm going to like trust myself and I'm going to handle this differently. And then you do handle it wonderfully and you build rapport with yourself and then you know that this works. So um, we have an Our Life, we call it app, which is an aftercare app for your phone. And we provide counseling, uh, individual counseling, group counseling. There's content on there that with meditation and breath work and yoga and all this kind of stuff to help you transition after Rhythmia. So um, it's very, very important the aftercare and integration. Mm -hmm. Without that, mm -hmm. without that, this isn't as beneficial. You know? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, one of the things is, uh, you know, in the in the psychedelic community, we hear a lot about set and setting. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's two other really important things, which is preparation and integration. And um, this all everything that makes a good preparation also makes a good integration. 100%. Uh, like dieta, uh, therapy, meditation, yoga, anything that's going to keep you in a in a healthy mindset and keep yourself regulated. Daily practice. Daily practice. Exactly. Yeah. Having some kind of routine that, that keeps you coming back to yourself every single day. Um, one of the things that I think is really interesting is um, that opportunity in the integration. There's there's a few weeks there where your synaptic plasticity is still lit. Mm -hmm. And so you you still have this opportunity uh, to, and what that means in the context of why I think it's exciting is you can create new habits more effectively and efficiently than under normal circumstances. That's right, your brain is moldable yeah. in, that, in that frame. Yeah, yeah, so it's a great time to do all the healthy things that are normally a little harder for you to do. And I think the the advice I always give is to enjoy it as much as possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the integration. Don't make integration a big chore. Make it, don't make your daily practice some elaborate thing that, that feels like a chore. Uh, don't put this pressure on yourself that you're not going to do it at all if you don't do it perfectly. Uh, a little bit goes a long way. The space between zero and one is a lot bigger than the space between one and two, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, the, there's that's why I think it's so exciting. We used to have this $1,000 aftercare program mm -hmm. that's now a free app. So everyone who comes now has the Our Life app, you know, which is really exciting. Um, and what I love about that approach, when you're leaving Rhythmia, you had all these great breakthroughs, all this healing, you got, you know, your miracle. <laughs> What's exciting about the app is you have all the music from the ceremony, you have all the different content and classes and everything. And it gives you this opportunity. You have, you, you have, you have like this space to create new interests and to explore your interests with the practice of breath work and with different meditation techniques and, mm -hmm. um, and exploring all this new music that you, that you had here. Uh, when you, when you have your rebirth experience or your big transformation, uh, with ayahuasca, something that's so exciting and that brings so much hope into the process is that you have a new life, a whole life. That's why the app is called Our Life. You you have this whole life ahead of you where you're not weighed down anymore. So it's a great time to 
think about the things that you want for your life, manifest something new, uh, do all the healthy things that you love. And I think it's super exciting. Well, when, the when part you... I agree. And I love, like, for example, like somebody will say, you know, while they're here, they'll be like, you know, I, I drink, I drink wine at night. I might have a cocktail and I, I kind of don't want to do it. It's I kind of, I'm overdoing it. Like I don't have an addiction, but right. it's something that just kind of like, I just wish it wasn't in my life, but I'm just in this habit, you know? And that's a great example on how you can just leave alcohol behind because your brain doesn't need alcohol and your mm -hmm. dopamine receptors are recalibrated while you're here. Your physical craving that you might have that habit is gone after arrhythmia and you just don't need it. And that's a great opportunity to just say, you know, I'm done with alcohol and you can use that momentum. Right. So there's a lot of really good momentum after post ceremonies and post arrhythmia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really like what you said, Ben, because one of the things that I usually tell people in breathwork when they're about to leave is, is that exactly like integration doesn't have to be like this, just, oh my God, like I need to do this. Like I need to have a daily practice. Like I need to eat clean. It's it's more like this change of perception of just looking at it like in a child's eye, you know, of just experiencing everything for the first time. Because it's like ayahuasca is just like a reset for some people, for most of people, right? So it's that like this new version of yourself, just discovering what you like, that maybe we thought that we liked so, so other things. And now it's like this part of exploring what you really like and tapping into like that intuition of like what feels good for your body like what movement feels good what daily practice feels good even what food right because at the end like we can tell them like eat clean but eat clean can mean very different for everyone right so that part is it's really it's really important to to bring into the integration um, so good. We have gone through like our discussion topics. So now we're going to go into the questions that people have been sending in. And there's a lot about like bad trips and like, they're really afraid of purging. So, um, I know that we have talked a little bit about this, but if you want to like go a little deeper into this and give, uh, our registrants a little you know, push <laughs> not to be afraid. What, what's a bad trip? Yeah, yeah. What's a bad trip? <laughs> yeah, what's right? a bad trip? Well, I, maybe I, something scary. Yeah. They're scared. Yeah. I mean, they think like, you know, I got freaked out by something that was weird and I'm nervous to do it. I always hear right. people, you know, my friends all did LSD in college and they and they said they had a bad trip and that just freaks me out. I don't even know what it is, right? Like, yeah. I think they're talking about that. So that's the big difference between ayahuasca and like recreational psychedelic use is that there's no such thing as a bad trip yeah mm -hmm. and uh everything where you know th it's true you do enter into a lucid dreamlike state and uh what's worse than a nightmare nothing nightmare means nightmare means nightmare but it also means like the worst of the worst like <laughs> oh sh she's a total nightmare you know it's it's the worst of the worst right so when you're when you're on ayahuasca sometimes you can enter into uh any kind of emotional state. And sometimes that emotion is fear and it can, and it feels really real because it's not just the idea of fear coming in. It's the experience of fear coming in. And so that can sometimes seem on the outside, if you're looking for something recreational, that's going to be fun and beautiful all the time, 100%, um, that can look like a bad trip, but on ayahuasca, it's not a bad trip. It's a, it's a detox. So whenever there's something negative or challenging or scary that's coming up, it's the medicine actually working to heal something out and clear it out of you. So mm -hmm. there's no such thing as a bad trip. I like to say that it's a vehicle to release emotion that's, that you don't really have a, a memory about, right? For example, um, my wife, uh, as a little girl, was afraid of being abandoned by her parents, which was an irrational fear because her parents were amazing. They would never do that. So just a little girl being scared for like a year and, you know, when she was four years old and she forgot about it and she, you know, cause none of it ever happened and her parents are amazing. She's close with both her parents. And then, that, then she's an adult woman. She drinks ayahuasca and here comes that fear from the amygdala, but she can't put it towards anything because she, she doesn't even know what this fear is about because nothing happened to her when she was four and mm -hmm. it wasn't about her parents abandoning her. So you have this kind of like, this fear lingering around in your, in your consciousness. 
So what happens instinctively is the prefrontal cortex wants to put context to that fear so it can leave. Yeah. So what is my wife actually terrified of in real life? Spiders. So so what did she see in the in the ayahuasca ceremony? Millions of spiders cruising around. But that was a vehicle to get rid of her fear of abandonment from childhood. There's no really spiders, you know, but mm -hmm. that was a, the way to get it out. So when people say that they're having a bad trip, it's a vehicle, like you're saying, to get the emotion released. So it's not, nothing to worry about. Right. Yeah, it's okay. Right. It's actually extremely therapeutic. It's good, yeah. People that have those, those so-called bad trips or those scary ones, the next day they say, man, I feel like a million bucks. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like something, a, a brick, my backpack full of bricks is gone, you mm -hmm. know? So it's really, it's really okay. Yeah, there was one ceremony where I was in and uh, someone at that closing group, at the end of ceremony, we do a little closing group and we wrap up the night and someone was sharing. They said, I just couldn't believe it. I was looking over at Ben Decker and he was having the worst night of his life. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was like, dude, I had a great night. <laughs> what are you talking about? The worse I look, the better I am, bro. But uh, that's funny yeah well it's because they and it's totally different than other modalities it's totally different and it's an amazing lesson about life when you go into ayahuasca and you start to work with the medicine where if something negative is coming up there's a release it's a vehicle for release the shift in perspective just that the medicine requires you to take to engage with it in that way is such an incredible tool in other areas i actually got food poisoning and i was like I'm releasing all that no longer serves me. I was like puking and, and it was like this therapeutic purge. And it sounds like a joke and it's kind of a joke, but the truth is that actually served as part of like one of the benefits I got from the medicine. Nice. Is that I, I relate totally different to feelings of discomfort and pain. Amazing. You know? Yeah. It's People funny because. Have, have chronic pain. Mm -hmm. are, are remedied. A lot of them report being remedied by this, this process mm -hmm. because as Dr. Mariana can explain to us as a medical doctor, chronic pain isn't always about actual pain. It's about the habitual rumination of this habit that I'm in this state of discomfort. Right. And a lot of that's psychosomatic. And mm -hmm. then this helps break the cycle of that. And people say, I don't have no pain in my body. And it's because mm -hmm. that was, it became emotional and it wasn't biological so much anymore. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also sometimes it's, it's emotions that we have stored right? Like from, from like, since we were kids that because of what society tells us or how we have been growing up that we stored all these emotions and they just become a physical symptom. So when they release, when they have this purge, they, they can, after it, maybe they don't have the, the pain any longer. So that also can, can, can help a lot. Mm. Um, I really like this question. So um, it says, can you address the spiritual implications of ayahuasca? Many I have spoken with have a perception that this is a dangerous practice, opening participants up to the spiritual world, potentially evil spirits. How do you answer these types of concerns? That is a great question for both of us. Uh -huh. <laughs> do you want to start with it? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll start. <laughs> so, uh, it's always so important to be uh, discerning when you're going to do anything extreme or new or different or spiritual. Um, I, I think it's always good to be discerning. Um, and ayahuasca itself is a substance and a lot of different people can have access to that substance. So before, so be, when you're going to do ayahuasca, where you do it and who you do it with is really important. So the the safety and the context of of doing ayahuasca at Rhythmia um, creates a lot of this spiritual safety around what it is, because physical safety and and a normal world safety around you getting everything, you know, that you may need throughout the process, that kind of safety that we create at Rhythmia with the medical team and the holistic team and everybody, that actually creates the intention and all of that creates spiritual safety. And so 
then on top of that, we have the shamans who are trained in the in the old traditions, you know, who are also setting really deep intentions to create a safe space in that maloka so that the maloka is a vortex for healing and and safety. Uh, I can't say what other people at other places are going to do with ayahuasca. So it, it is actually true that if you're going to go do ayahuasca somewhere, you do need to be very, very discerning about where you're going to do it and the context that you're going to do it and who you're getting it from. And so it's a it's important that people are asking that. It's a great question. I'm glad you're asking that. Uh, all of all of our ceremonies have we we always hear people after ceremony saying that was the most beautiful thing I've ever been in. It felt like everybody was angels. But there's also the reality that the medicine is there to trigger stuff that needs to be released. So so you do have even if. E portals to evil spirits and portals to hell realms are not opening up, which they're not, you can still have scary moments. And so what's important to realize is that when you're, when you have all of your, you know, your, you know, dot, your ducks in a row, you know, when you have everything taken care of, uh, you can, you can approach those scary moments and get the release that they're actually for instead of, you know, feeling sort of like stuck in a situation where you don't have someone who can lead you through those scary moments. So when you're talking about spiritual implications of using ayahuasca, portals and, and bad spirits and stuff like that opening up, that's really when someone is using ayahuasca and they don't know how to use it and they're doing it in a sloppy, unsafe way. There's also, of course, the situations where people do have negative intentions, you know, uh, but, but in general, when you when you are here, what you will find is that there's meticulous attention to detail on all levels of the company. So everything is set up here with a lot of something that, you know, a lot of reverence. There, there's a lot of respect for the sensitivity and the sensitive places and the subtleties of what you experience on the medicine here. So so I can't speak for other places doing ayahuasca i i do know in general that ayahuasca is a very good uh healing modality for a lot of people but uh but you do have to be super discerning and that's that's the reason somewhere that's the reason rhythmia has to exist and that we we have to do it in the way that we're doing it is for that exact purpose and, and i explain it um in a, in a similar way um a little bit in one of the classes i teach is that I believe in the duality of humanity that we have a, a physical self and we have a spiritual self and some people don't believe that and that's fine some people believe more in the emotional side of that as opposed to the spiritual side but i believe in the duality and so my spiritual jeff is perfect um it vibrates at a high frequency of the universe of god of nature of everything that's perfect in the world but my physical body is far from perfect it's very <laughs> imperfect and my physical body has struggle. I have bad thoughts. I, I, I eat poorly sometimes. I might do something stupid. And so, so I'm vibrating physically at a lower frequency. So the goal of Rhythmia, and I think of the ayahuasca sessions, is to get your physical body to vibrate at the same spiritual vibration as your spiritual self. And so that's where this clarity comes in these breakthroughs. So in order to do that, you have to have intention setting, you have to eat right, you have to do some breath work, do some meditation, do some yoga, which is what we offer here. And then the ayahuasca helps you, boom, connect. And your spiritual self is at the same frequency as your physical self. And the reason for that is because during an ayahuasca session, you drink ayahuasca, which like the shamans say, is like drinking a cup of nature. You take nature into your body. And I think we could all agree that nature is perfect. It's humanity that destroys nature, right? But nature is perfect. And so if you take nature into your physical self, you're raising your frequency up to the spiritual you. And when you get there, that's where you have these breakthroughs. Now, the the, the ability to be vulnerable to certain um, spiritual entities or darkness or bad intention, absolutely that happens out in the world, um, out wherever. I don't know. I've never experienced that. But does that happen? Of course, I've heard all about it. But... Like Ben said, the intention setting of Rhythmia and the safety that we have and the integrity of our staff is what keeps this place really safe. And, you know, Ben and I come from a religious background. 
and we understand that there's concerns for a lot of people, but, but everybody that's come here that's been orthodox of any sort of religious belief of all faiths that we've seen, every faith that's come here has had an amazing experience and they've used it as part of their spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, exactly. So there, there are people whose communities, like the, these Orthodox people, whose communities maybe on the surface would say ayahuasca, no, uh, but, but have come here and been through the program as presented here and have felt like this is 100% compatible with, with their beliefs. Yes. And we're talking all faiths. Yeah. All literally. faiths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because at the end also what they talk, even like in the tradition, is that like it 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 becomes like you it connects you more to this spirituality, but spirituality looks different for everyone and it can be, you know, different religions. And also like just connecting with yourself. So and and very important the set and setting, uh definitely for anything in ayahuasca is not any different from that. So we have a last question so that we can start wrapping up our webinar. And our question is, what sets Rhythmia apart for people that suffer from trauma or from PTSD? Okay, well, let me let me start with this. So we have a program. That's what sets us apart. We have the Rhythmia Way. And the Rhythmia Way is what we've been talking about. Intentions that are clear that we teach you. All the classes that we offer on integration and all the things we do during the week, which is daily yoga, meditation, breath work on the weekends the food, the, the hydrocolonic cleanse, which is a psychosomatic experience of releasing and everything on the grounds is geared towards you having what we call a miracle. Now, a miracle means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but what it means to us and what we're using that word for is because if you see who you've become, like Ben explained, and you merge back with your true self and you're no longer dissociated, but you're actually connected to who you are, and then you heal all the past emotional trauma you've gone through and all the pain you've been holding and you're a new person you're back to the authentic you that you came into this world with that is a miracle and you mm -hmm. move forward with this new perspective on life in a way that's so refreshing and so liberating that we call it a miracle and that's what sets with me apart in my opinion is that we have a program that guides you through this process. This isn't just a place, oh yeah, come and hang out and have some cool food and talk to people and drink ayahuasca. I mean, that happens, that is going on here, but that is <laughs> not what this is. Right. This is a very carefully planned and, and curated program that's been fine-tuned over the last eight and a half years to create the best results for the guests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end, it's it's a program. And that's why even since like the first class that people come and have, like we encourage them to really come to every class. There's some mandatory classes that are really, really going to help with the process. But even coming to yoga, coming to the answer is you like every other class can bring this in this different insights into the process that they're going because everything has been created to wrap around in the experience of ayahuasca. So it's not only come in, drink the medicine and that's it, but like having all these other modalities that can help you navigate your process. So, yeah. And we're Thank excited you. to have you come and check this out because this is a unique place and it's run in a unique way that's made made for you to, to get what you have as your intention. And you can realize mm -hmm. that by working our program. <laughs> 